Right, moving on to the uh, cylinder head. Uh, we're just going to uh, strip this down a bit. So uh, I'll remove the uh, inlet manifolds, which are just held on with uh, anon bolts, uh, and then the center exhaust manifold. And then we'll remove the, uh, the valves and check them. Obviously someone's already um, uh, had a go at cleaning these. Uh, it's okay, there's a little bit of damage. We'll be checking that. There's a big chunk uh, out there. But I think uh, we're generally okay. But we'll, uh, we'll remove all the valves and then we'll check the valves and the uh, valve springs and the uh, <coughs> and the valve guides for, for wear. Okay, so we're going to uh, start to remove the uh, valves from the head. So we've got a a uh, valve spring compressor which is pretty essential and uh, we put the open end on the top of the valve and the bottom end on, on the actual valve itself and then I'm just checking you can see this you can yeah and then screw yeah. and then screw this up tight Now it might be, yeah, so that little click, I don't know if you heard it, but uh, that means that the top of the valve letting go of the collets. So I'll just turn it around a bit now and hopefully I'll try and get the camera so we can see what we're doing. Right, so by screwing the Uh, valve compressor down we've uh, compressor springs and then hopefully we can pull the collets out with a little magnet there we go in fact look both of them have come out so that's the easiest way of getting the collets out okay so we've removed the collets and so now we're going to release the pressure on the uh, undo the clamp there we go and now off come the uh, can we see that yeah the valve springs there's two valve springs an inner and outer and they've also yeah the whole thing's come off and then we can push the valve hmm. Hmm. the valve seems to be not wanting to come <laughs> come out of this this particular case. Thank you. Okay, and then the valves, uh, the valves out. So we've got the uh, top of the valve there, the two springs, and then there's a seat on the bottom, which often, often actually stays on here. Okay, in our case, it's come off with the spring. But we'll just be aware there is a seat there. And then we've got the valve, and uh, yeah, it looks, uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's an awful lot of carbon. Uh, let's have a look, see if we can get any more light on it. There's a lot of carbon built up on the edge of this uh, valve, so it's not looking great. But anyway, we're going to check the valves. So we slide the valve almost home, and then waggle it. And the more waggle there is, then the more worn the guide is. You don't want to check it out there because any valve, any valve's going to waggle when it's when it's like virtually out. You check it when it's virtually home. You probably can't see, but the I don't know if you can hear that, but there's quite a lot of waggle on here. So I think we'll be and and I think we'll be replacing the valve guides. I've been looking down, I haven't got the valves out yet, all of them, but I can see that there's oil residue, uh, especially on the inlet uh, valves. Uh, so I'm pretty sure we'll be replacing at least the guides and maybe the valves themselves. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to bag and tag the valves um, to make sure, I'm just looking at the seats of the valves, that, uh, to see if there's any burning or pitting or anything like that. 
I think uh, we might get away with the, the valves themselves. We have to measure the stem because the stem might have worn rather than the valve guide. But I think we might get away with them. We'll have to see if the, if the stem's okay. Then uh, there's no there's no burning or pitting to the edge here. It needs cleaning up, but I think it's okay. It certainly needs cleaning up. And there might be a bit of pit in there. Until I clean them up, I don't know. But we're going to bag and tag them so that we know that that is the exhaust the exhaust valve off the uh, drive side. And now we're doing the uh, inlet valves, the, uh, which are exactly the same. The only difference being that there is uh, an oil seal on the top of the uh, valve guides uh, on the inlet side, and they just they just prise off. Okay. Yeah, they just pull off. You certainly never want to reuse those. It, it looks like in our case. Uh, from initial inspection we'll be replacing the valve guides possibly the valves as well and then the other thing I'm going to do is measure the length of the valve springs <coughs> uh, the free length uh, because uh, they they can uh, be shortened if you think about it uh, normally on an engine there's a, uh, if you leave an engine there's always one or two valves that are fully compressed the valve's fully open, the springs are fully compressed and it can sit like that for years and so of course that can uh, serve to shorten the springs but we'll be checking those later. Right, the uh, valves are now all removed and uh, there's signs of uh, oil on a few of them um, so I think we'll be having probably new guides, new valve guides throughout um, hopefully we'll be able to keep the original valves not sure note that everything's bagged and tagged as with all the parts every single part i take off the bike is all bagged and tagged we'll, we'll have a look at that probably later on but every part that comes off is put in bags so that they don't get mixed up and they don't get lost and uh, we, know, we know what on earth they are when we're trying to find them again okay um what I'm going to be doing with this then is I shall be taking it down to the engineers and having a chat with them and see what they think about the guides and the valves uh, and we'll take it from there. I think the uh, if we have new valve guides then they'll be recutting the seats as a matter of course because you, you have to um, because the seats look, look like they need doing anyway. But um, So it's all ready to go to the engineers now and then we'll have a chat with them. Oh, just having a check on the threads of the uh, plugs. Yeah, I, I think they're okay. We'll have a proper check on them. Right, next up, it's the barrels. All I'm going to do with the barrels is I'm going to uh, uh, remove these um, pillar bolts, as they're called. Yeah, they just screw in, and uh, we'll just be checking the threads on them. They all seem good, but we'll check. The threads actually on the pillar bolts inside the pillar bolts and in the head uh, in the barrels because the uh, the head uh, studs screw into the pillar bolts and then the pillar bolts screw into the barrel so you need to check that both threads are okay uh, then I'm gonna I'll be measuring the barrels but um, to be honest, I'll probably leave that to the engineers. I can see that the barrels are scored. You might be able to see that vertical scoring. Uh, yeah, and it might be that we can just get away with honing the barrels uh, to get rid of that. But if the barrels are, uh, are worn so they're, they're not vertical, sometimes uh, they can be like a cone shape, then they might need a rebore. Right, uh, then we're gonna remove the tappets. We're gonna label all the tappets so we know exactly which one. Uh, there's which and which way round they go and we'll be checking them for wear on the feet looks they look generally okay i think uh, that one's not, not looking brilliant but i'll have a look uh and remove the uh remove the gasket and then that'll be the barrels done and then we'll take them down to the engineers with the pistons and we'll have a chat about whether it needs a, a hone or rebore or whatever a little bit of sign of oil burn in there but uh, otherwise I think we're okay. Liners are nice and level with the 
top of the barrel so that's good okay I'm just going to take the pillar bolts out and take the tappets out and then remove the gasket uh, from the bottom facing and so on to the rocker boxes uh, so we're going to withdraw the rocker shaft uh, ready for uh, blast cleaning the other thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the any aluminium crush washers that are left in these holes where the allen screws go now it's often very difficult to tell if there is an aluminium washer still down there but if you look at how deep that hole is before the shoulder it's quite deep now if you look at this hole you see that it's quite shallow before the shoulder so uh, and the same for the middle so I'm fairly sure that the crush washers are still in those two not necessarily in that one at the end so I'm going to have a go at using a small screwdriver and I'm going to see if I can prise what's left of the aluminium crush washers out now look at that I managed to get the remains of that crush washer out of this hole now I mean that so didn't want to come out I was honestly got to the point where I'm thinking hang on is there actually a crush washer in there you do do that because of course it's aluminium so it's basically the same metal as the actual casing itself and and so a uh, bit of a nightmare but obviously you need to get them out um, otherwise it'll leak and ready to put the new ones in right now we've got uh, I've got the crush washer out there's only one that was in there jammed in I'm going to drive out the uh, knock out the uh, rocker shaft so I put a nut on the end I've heated I've heated this end up not on this end mm -hmm. And there we have the, uh, and here we have the rocker spindle removed. Uh, there's a no, there's a little O-ring seal here, uh, and then there's the three rockers, and they've all got uh, like a Thackeray washer uh, and and plain washer at one end and plain washer at the other. Okay, but obviously we'll go through the order of reassembly. But basically, Thackeray washer and plain washer go next to the adjuster. And there's always a plain washer next to the actual rocker. So the spring goes outside the plain washer. Very good. Right, and so that's the uh, rocker box... Uh, ready I'm going to leave these inspection caps in because I might as well have them blast clean at the same time as the uh, as the body and so I'll do exactly the same now with the inlet uh, rocker box uh, ship it all down so it's ready for blast cleaning and there we go that's about it for now everything's been totally stripped down and I have just taken all the various bits down that needed vapour blasting are taking them down to the vapour blasters. But they're very busy at the moment despite Covid etc. And it'll be at least a couple of weeks apparently before I get them back. So there'll be a bit of a hiatus now before anything else happens. Before I took the parts down to be vapour blasted I uh, sealed off the major oil ways and the cylinders. Uh, just to try and stop the worst of the vapour blasting getting in. Uh, because it does get everywhere but we'll check on that when they come back when they come back from the vapor blasters I'm then going to take them most of those cases over for repair and just about everything else over to Dave Smith over in Lancashire uh, I'm going to check the crankshaft check the conrods we'll check the tappets check the camshafts and the and the rockers I uh, will check all the valves, the valve springs, the valve seats, check the main, main bearings. Uh, I'll also get him to, uh, to see if he can get this uh, kickstart shaft off. The timing case needs repair. Because I couldn't work out when I, when I took the um, 
and I took that inspection cap off, uh, I what was going on, but if you see this bottom hole, it's that, they've actually tried to repair it, they've drilled actually straight through the casing, and then they've made a massive mess of that one, so if you look there, look, they've drilled straight through the casing in an effort to repair these three, uh, so all that needs repairing. Um, and uh, oh yeah, and this outer, this outer primary case has got this broken, this broken bit there, and of course the uh, and the uh, cylinder barrel's got that bent fin. So I'll be taking all of this over uh, to Dave Smith and having a chat with him and getting his opinion, like a second opinion on what we think needs replacing, whether whether these just need rehoning or whether they need a complete regrind. Sometimes you can just like hone them. Uh, these are already 20 thou, well certainly the mains are, are 20 thou over the uh, or under. The uh, big ends I think are standards. But anyway, I've got to wait a couple of weeks now for all that stuff to come back from blast cleaning. Then we'll go take it over to Dave for repair and, and honing and grinding and reboring, whatever needs doing. Then I'll take all the parts, the outer covers for polishing. All the parts that need polishing will be taken to be polished. Hopefully we'll have that back with the with the kickstart lever out of it and then we're ready to uh oh uh, yeah then we're ready to to rebuild so it's going to be a bit of a gap for a couple of weeks uh then when we get things back then next phase is to take him to dave's have a chat and see what he's doing leave him with him for another couple of weeks get them back then polishing then rebuilding see you in a while then